site da coleção, o link que o professor Bruno partilhou com todos. The sketches will be in the link that Professor Bruno already shared with you, but I'm leaving it here. And I'll in a minute I'll open a sketch. I'll do as always. I'll I'll be creating copies from the sketches. So I'll be working in the same sketch throughout the whole session, and then I'll break it into several sketches in the end. Yes. So uh, yes, I already I'm all uh, on. Espera aí, deixa-me ver aqui. I still open doors here. Okay, so uh, once again, we are already recording the session. Um, everything, everyone uh, feels comfortable to that. Uh, so we will maintain this recording for further uh, studies after the session. So the floor is yours, Pedro. Thank you once again. Thank you, Bruno, for for um, once again for this uh, opportunity to be here with everyone. I'll I just left the link for this sketch. I'll be sharing, uh, and I'll be working throughout the session. So if you have any issue with the with the code, if you're following along, or is it, it's just okay for you just to be seeing, as we did in the last session. But if you want to follow along, I left the link in the in the chat. So. Welcome everyone again to the second session. So for this session, we we missed working in detail uh, with the variables. So we'll start with the variables and then we'll talk about if statements. So uh, uh, conducting or arranging the flow of the program. And that will be the, the end of the foundational concepts of programming. So having variables to drawing, repetitions instructions and conditions this will allow you to do a full program so what it, it's called a, a, a program itself so, um and then we'll just load a media we'll start by by loading a, a typeface or an image if you want to and then we'll in the end of the first hour we'll um, talk about arrays that's a special kind of variable so this first hour will almost be variables only um, and the second hour, we'll start building our visualization. So we'll put everything together in a visualization, we hope. So without further ado, uh, uh, let's uh, recapitulate uh, the previous session and start coding. So let's just do whatever we did first. So comments slash slash, or we can do multi-line comments like this. Whatever you write in between, this is a comment, okay? And we, I usually start like to say PCD 2023 workshop. Uh, I just put the dates on everything, uh, 0104 and whatever. So you can just do this. This is a comment, you leave it for yourself. The function setup, as we've mentioned, prepares the program and the draw draws a program. I was reviewing the video and I, I did a mistake. There's actually two more functions, automatic functions. I said that it was three, but We'll go. We'll talk about the third one today. Uh, so this one gets prepares the program and it's is responsible for loading variables, for loading assets, and drawing the screen. And this one updates, refreshes the screen every time. So a function is a group. It's it's a task. It's a group of instructions. So that, this means it's a task, like in user experience. Isto pode ser ligação ao mostrado de interação, né? Fazer um user flow. Né? Functions control the tasks, and tasks are made of individual instructions that the user has to do or a computer has to do. Um, so setup. So functions are called are are groups of instructions. So a group is what it's enclosed between curly brackets or two-bar brackets. I don't know how you call this, uh, prefer to call this. And they are declared by stating the name function and then and the name of the function. So setup is the name of this function, of this group of instructions, and draw is the name of this group of instructions. These are the automatic ones. Processing calls these ones automatic. And we can create custom functions, like, for example, function my drawing, like we did, in the previous session. And for example, here we can just draw an ellipse. Um, for example, uh, always like this. <laughs> Sorry about always doing the same code. Um, and this 
my drawing is not called automatically because this is what we users teach the computer what to do. So for example, I would say no stroke, first de define the properties of the drawing, fill, I don't know, 40, I don't know, something like this. So a group of instructions, one instruction, two instructions, three instructions, we don't have operations yet. Uh, but this one, we just taught the computer saying, when I want to do my drawing, now we've taught the computer how to do this drawing. So this is a custom named function that whenever we want to do it, we call it by name. So I would just say my drawing. And I would just say like this. So it draws a ball. So this is pretty straightforward. So this was basically what we did. We did matrix transformations also in last session, but we'll leave this one for later. Um, and uh, today we're gonna concentrate on variables. So what are variables? Like we've briefly mentioned before, variables are special boxes. I call it boxes because it's easier. It's there's actually their positions in memory. So let's let's think about the memory as a, um, a bookshelf, an empty bookshelf, and the variable is like a book. So we, we declare the, to the computer, I'm going to use a, a special kind of box that I'm going to put on the shelf, on the memory. And the computer says, okay, let's create a box. So variables on the old days were called var. So you still see a lot of, sorry, typing and thinking at, at the same time is very difficult. Uh, you always see a lot of code still on the web with var. So var is the old way to declare variables. Nowadays, variables, uh, because of uh, specific technical issues like memory leakage uh, or scoping, uh, they are called let. I don't know why this is. I still haven't figured this one out. And you also see another type of variable that's, this is counterintuitive, called const. Const as in constant, uh, constant? Uh, also variable, also something like this. Okay, also variable. Not not so variable. Not so variable. Okay. Why this this is? I usually for this purpose or our workshop, I will not be using constants. Although I could, um, in a, in a couple of cases, but constants are a specific variable that's defined in the program and it is not meant to be changed. So you load it and then you don't change it. So for the the for simplicity's sake, let's just say whenever you find something on the web called var, we'll be using lets and I encourage you to use lets from here on. So what we'd say here is declaring the variable. It's the same as um, saying to the computer, please give me some space in the memory, reserve some space in the memory to be using this. We could declare and assign the value uh, at the same time, and we'll be doing this, but for the education purpose, it's always bro broken up in three steps. You declare, this means you give the name, you give a name to the variable. Uh, when, we're, when we're in class, sometimes I, I always say, you, you to the, you on the left, please, Tell me the name of the guy to your right. And people don't know who I'm talking to. So the computer is the same. If you don't have the name for a variable, the computer doesn't know which value, which person, which thing you're referring. So variables have to have names for you to call it. Otherwise, it's just a pointer in the memory. Um, it's like our names, like Bruno, Pedro, Fernando, Maria, Rodrigo. These are the names in my in my positions in your in, the, in my Zoom here uh, in my computer. So I would say Maria, tell Rodrigo to to do something, and you know which variable I'm talking about. So the computer is the same. Um, so first of all, you have to declare the variable, give it a name, and then you have to assign the value. Okay. Uh, so this is where you say my variable. Uh, by the way, as I mentioned before, a variable must start with a letter. It must not include spaces, um, nor, nor um, hyphens, because this is a, a, an arithmetic operator. Uh, you can do underscores. Everything that's text-wise, you can do it. You just have to start it with a letter. Uh, I would encourage you to give it kind of uh, semantic relevant names for you to know. Professor, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. 
uh, is the constant variable the same as static variable in terms of uh, constant? <laughs> <laughs> this is the part where I'm, I would have to go to into Stark Overflow. I have no clue uh, whatsoever. Uh, um, does it stay running while the program is still running? Yeah, the yeah. entire time. So yeah, so and it and it's also it, it has also a particular uh, thing. The the const actually is to protect. For example, if you have the const as a, a string for a password, this means it you cannot uh, do operations or convert it. it. This is very useful because it allows you to lock the type of data inside of it. Although, if you put an array like we've, we're going to see in, in a few minutes, um, you can actually change the values in an array. You cannot change the constant from array to oh, another. Oh, it's a read only. Read only, okay. Uh, is, yeah, is it's, a... it's read only, <laughs> except when it's a, an object or a complex variable, you can actually change properties inside of it. It's okay, kind properties. of weird. Okay, yeah. thank yeah, you. JavaScript is very flexible, but yeah, for, for beginners, just use let. You won't have any problems. Uh, and then, yeah, well, when you know more than me, <laughs> maybe you can teach me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I'll have to go into that. So the static mode, I think it's like Java, right? Um, uh, and uh, like having a public variable uh, accessible. Uh, I, I have no clue. I have no clue. I'll have to figure this one out also. Um, so thank you for your doubts, Jose. Uh, uh, it gave me something to look up to look later tonight. So assign a variable. So this is where you put this variable, this box, this person, this entity, this space on the shelf or inside the computer is going to have a number. This is where JavaScript is pretty cool and annoying because you can actually say that this is, for example, a hundred. So this is what it is called. This is an Int, an integer. This is a full number, a round number. Okay. There are several kinds of variables, and JavaScript, it's the is uh, JavaScript is not a typecast language. This means you don't have to say this box is a box for numbers, this box is a box for text, this box is a box for colors. You don't have to say which kind of variable you're going to put inside of it. JavaScript deals with it. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes, like we're probably going to see several times, it's going to be bad because we have to figure out what that variable is becoming. Uh, so if I put a hundred, now I can say, for example, I'm going to draw my drawing and I'm going to put my variable inside of it. Remember the properties when we stated custom functions and gave them properties? Um, this my drawing function is exp is sending a number or a variable when it's calling the function. So what I'm expecting here will be a number. So I'll, I will receive a number that I will call it x. I, I'm receiving something x. So I can use this x here. So it, this will be a number. Okay. So now the, the thing changed. For example, I can do this in setup and I'm assigning the variable once, but I can also say, for example, uh, sorry, for example, I'll reassign always. So I can also say that my variable now is equal to mouse x. By the way, this mouse x, this pink word, is called it's it's a system variable. It's what is called a reserved word. So the computer knows automatically with what is mouse x, what variable is mouse x. So, so mouse x variable is always equal equal to the position of the mouse. Let's, let, let me just preferences. I noticed in the video that probably the cursor is too small for you to see on the on the on the screen. Let me just cursor, 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 cursor. Where is it? Trackpad cursor. Is it here? Uh, how do I do this? Cursor, cursor size. Cursor size. Yeah. And cursor size, cursor size, cursor. Pointer. Let's put the pointer bigger. Maybe this is easier for you to see on, on the screen. 
So, um, mouse X, where, where else? Mouse X is oh, the computer always knows what is mouse X. So, this operating system gives it always the position of the mouse. So, it, it, the mouse X is always reading, uh, asking the computer. Processing is always asking the computer, where is the mouse? Where is the mouse? Where is the mouse? So, mouse X equals the mouse. Mouse X equals the mouse. So, it's always giving me the horizontal position of the mouse. So, this ball horizontally follows the mouse. So this means that I'm declaring, I'm assigning, and I can also do operations with it. For example, I'm telling my variable is equal to 100. So let's reassign it with operations. Let's just think for a second. My variable is 100, so it's 100. I can also say that my variable equals itself so it's equal to itself. So 100 equals to 100. Okay, perfect. Minus the distance between itself and the mouse. So what happens is that the 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 the, the current position or the future position will be equal to the current position minus something. So I'm doing math with uh, the position itself. So Declaring, assigning, and using or doing instructions or operations. So I'm doing a risk. Okay. My variable equals. I already muted. My variable. Um, so uh, my variable because my variable uh, is for menos da mais. Uh, mouse X manage my variable. So I can actually do this, for example, and I'll just do slash four. So it will actually produce me, whoops, it's, I should be using a plus here. I always get this mixed. So this will get me like a, 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 a twinning, um, sorry, um, easing function. So when I move my mouse, the ball eases in to the mouse. Eases out, sorry, eases out to the mouse. So it kind of goes after the mouse and slows down. So I can use the, the variable to recalculate, do operations with itself. Uh, by the way, doing this or doing copy. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it on the code, saving it if you wanna use it. Doing this or doing this plus equals, like we've seen before in the loops. This is an easy way to say my variable equals itself plus, oops, sorry, like this. So yeah, same thing, same code, only shorter, okay? Uh, actually, this is too fast for me. I'll just go times eight and okay. Now you can see it better. I hope you can see it better. So it's just just going and slowing down. If you, want, if you really wanna see this, just do it 24 or 50 and then it just goes bzz, bzz kind of small Tesla-like movements, door closing movements. Um, yeah, so these are variables. You can declare, put a number in it, and use it for several things. So the thing is, variables are not only for numbers. So I told you this was an integer, but we can use variables. And let me follow my notes here. Um, we'll just use numbers, strings, colors, and booleans just for today, for, for this first part. So my variable, uh, that's another, let's use another. Another, as the variable name, equals to 100.45. So, or uh, let's just say it like this. If I... For us, 100 and 100.00 is the same, except let me just do this simple trick for you to see. If I say print, remember command, the print command? Oops, okay, this is what happens when we do several print commands and the print command gets interpreted as common print. So whenever you print, let's say my variable, Let's divide this variable by two. 
Remember, this variable is a number. It's a whole number. When you print this variable by 100, it gives me 50. Okay, perfect. If I print another, uh, sorry. Just to make the difference for you to see. This gives me, uh, hmm. this also gives me 50. Why? Why is it giving me 50? I'm just doing a trick. I'm telling the, I can print a string followed by the number. So it just does this. Okay, this is strange, but let's 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 change the, the values. Let's change to 99. And theoretically, this would be the same, right? Now oh, come on. I got a little trip back me. Okay, sometimes this is just annoying. Today this guy is not ah uh, okay, I forgot. This is JavaScript. Okay, JavaScript is our friend. If you do this in Java, um this value will be 14 uh, this well val this value will be either 49 or 50 usually 49 because it rounds down and this will be 49.5 uh, javascript is actually allowing us to do this uh, sorry about this i should have practiced better so i i just wanted to say that this will give you a total precision of the number and sometimes um sometimes dividing an integer an integer by 2 still gives you an, an inter, in a full number, an integer number. So you really have to be careful and always do your prints and see what numbers you're getting. So, uh, sorry, I'll have to jump this. Este exemplo não funcionou, foi bataca. Mas vamos tentar fazer aqui outra coisa. Um, so this is an integer. This is a float. Float number, a floating point number. Uh, Chamo-lhe um número de vírgula. Um, uh, let's do a simple float, uh, uh, string, string. Let's do a string. Let's do, for example, name. Uh, let's, uh, the advantage of being Portuguese is that you can write your, your variable names in Portuguese and it doesn't conflict with the, the program. So I'll just say nom equals, yeah, good. And of course, I'm going to print nom. Of course, nums. I don't know what it's going to do if I print num slash two. Ah, okay. So now we're getting somewhere. Uh, when I try to divide this new variable, I let I declare the new variable, the same as the others. But when I assigned it, I assigned it as a string. A string is a, it's like text. It's, it's called a string of characters. It's a string variable. Uh, and theoretically, for us humans, we think, okay, let's divide the number Pedro by two, and it would probably give me PED, for example, the first three letters. So I would divide this by two. Of course, this is actually possible if you use a split, a, a split function. You can split this, this uh, string by in, in two parts, but you cannot divide it, do an arithmetic uh, arithmetic operations with a string um, because it's text. The computer doesn't know. It's like this is a full block. So it's it's giving you a special kind of error message called not a number. Okay, so it's telling okay this variable may not be divided by two because it's not a number. So okay, we could use the the the, the split function for for just for 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 the fun sake. I'm not going to do it. I'm just gonna put it here and for you to try it later. It doesn't work. Uh, try this one. Okay. So this is string. So what happens with string? I'm going to I'm going to wing it right now. I'm going to improvise a bit. So I, if I want to write this name on the on the on the computer because I already have it as a variable, it would be perfect for me to draw the name on stage. So for you to draw text on stage, it's very, very simple. You just go to reference, as always, choose, I don't know, text. Okay, I already have text output, but I don't, I don't want this. I'm going to choose typography on the topics, like we said previously. I'm just going to go to topics. 
typography text, 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 text. So these are all attributes. These are all properties of texts. Loading and displaying. Okay, perfect. This, this is what I want. Just I'm just going to click here, text. And it says, okay, I have no clue what this does. So I'll just copy this one out like we did in the previous session. And then in draw, I'm going to paste it here. So, okay. Three words. Let's just decompose it. Text size, 32. Don't know what this means, but I guess this is a size. Let's change it. Let's put 64 and what? Well, it made it bigger. Okay. So this is the size in pixels. Perfect. Let's just say 24 and it will be smaller. Okay. Perfect. So this is a controlling the body size and the text word 1030. Okay. So this is pretty straightforward. So and fill text, fill text. Okay. So I guess I get the feeling of it. So like I mentioned in the previous uh, session, when you're in this stage, just copy the examples and have fun with them, play with them. So text words, this is pretty straightforward word. So why not say Pedro? Okay. And this allows me to write Pedro. Okay, perfect. So, but guess what? I already have my name Pedro over here. So can I use a variable here? Yeah, perfect. So what this means is I uh, declare a variable, I assign the value to a variable, and then I can use variables in any part of the program and do operations with them. And I can update them. Um, in this case, I just declared the variable in the beginning of a program. I could do, for example, a prompt. Uh, that's a JavaScript uh, uh, a, a browser thing. And the user could just input his, uh, his name and it gets stored in a variable, and then I could just display it on the screen uh, wherever I want it to be. For example, 1030. So like I told you before, 1030. Right by now, you must have figured out that usually when I do graphic things on the screen, the first numbers, in this case, it's the string, the first property, the first uh, parameter, and then the second parameters are the coordinates. So, Usually the first numbers that appear are the coordinate system or the placement of the object itself. So here I just say, okay, 10. Okay, let's just do 200 and 200. Let's see where it goes, probably here. Okay, a bit farther than I expected, but here. So this just controls the position of this text object. Okay, so yeah, one ball following horizontal, one text for following vertical. So I was using this example to show you that we can use string variables we can use numeric variables and guess what right now i'm feeling that this typeface is not what i want to do i want to use a custom typeface and i will use this this uh, opportunity before before moving along to the to the final uh, um, different variables to talk about um, loading fonts so i wanted to choose a different typeface for this so like always i'm very lazy i always use google fonts dot com bar fonts and okay it's taking a lot of time i don't know why and i would choose for example a really something uh, different uh, that would do me uh a nice render on screen. Ah, Playfair, it's cool. Playfair is, is different. So I just choose, for example, this this family. I would download it. Um, I have no clue what it's doing right now. Okay, just desktop, download, Playfair display. Okay, perfect. And so I'll just open it. Uh, yes. My computer is not doing anything right now. Why not? Okay, uh, I would open it. It's uh, sorry, it's here on my on my second screen, and I would choose, for example, uh, the bold the bold version. So, I'm I'm I have the bold version here on my computer. Okay, I have the bold version here. I just downloaded it, um, and I want to use this version that I downloaded here. I want to use my name in in uh, Playfair. 
So what I would do is you have your sketch like this. So on the on the uh, we we're using the the browser editor. You can actually, you can also download and use the library on your uh, usual no vosso editor favorito. You can use it on in your favorite uh, code editor. Uh, but I usually use the, the this editor online. So if you open the assets, so this is like the the the, the documents tree. If you open this um, drawer, you'll see that actually this sketch is actually a, a web page that loads a CSS file and a JavaScript file. Okay, so basic web design if you've ever done it. And what we have to do is somehow get the file in here and also load it either from the CSS or from the or from the JavaScript. Here from the JavaScript will be better because we're doing JavaScript rendering. So we have to here do here. Click it. I usually create a folder and I call it that or assets or whatever or fonts if you want. For example, fonts. Now I have a folder. So it creates a folder, a regular folder file. And I upload the folder here. So I'll just drag and drop the folder in here. So I just use the Playfair Display Bold. Not really recommended uh, design, design wise, but okay. Uh, I guess it will be fun to use this. So right now I have a font file. I usually copy the name here to make sure I have every name correct. Sorry. And I just say, okay, so now I want to use a font here. So like numbers, like strings, and you'll see like colors, objects, images, anything that gets used inside the visual part, the visual stage has to be somehow loaded into memory. And like I've been explaining, variables are places like a bookshelf that you put things in memory. So I'm going to put, I'm going to load this file from a folder in the, in the web server and put it in the memory of my program. So I'm gonna load it into a variable. So declaring variables, let's guess what? I'm gonna say, let my font, okay? Or text font or the name itself, you, 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 you decide. So, but now there's a trick. Now is the time to talk about a specific function uh, of JavaScript. It's called preload. When the web page loads, it actually is loading the web page and then it's loading the HTML elements and it's making sure it's getting the graphics and then the JavaScript runs. So you have to make sure the font is loaded, the images are loaded before the JavaScript runs. So this is a special thing. It's, uh, there's a special function that detects when the, all the DOM has been loaded. And uh, once again, processing has made this very easy and it, it has made a special function called preload. So preload tells processing, okay, before you run, make sure everything is ready and available to you to draw on screen. So you just copy this function preload and let's put it before setup. Actually, there's no problem using it before or after. The JavaScript does a thing called function hoisting. It just corrects the position of things. But yeah, just to make sure just use the preload in the correct order. So preload, actually it will be settings, preload, setup, and draw. Uh, any other function, you can do it whatever you want. Uh, so you do the function preload, make sure everything is loaded and say, okay, my font will be load my font, go to the web server and load. So where's my font? My font is in a folder called fonts, and then it's called Playfair. So I'll just go on the folder fonts. Of course, if you know a bit about web, this is how you declare a folder in your file tree. So relatively to this JavaScript file, look here, relatively to this JavaScript file, go into a folder called fonts, okay? So directly font slash, and then put your font, your, your, oops. Uh, yeah, let's copy this one out. Okay, copy. And put it there. I'm, do, I'm doing copy paste because I usually type this wrong. So right now, it's still loading it with, I don't know, with uh, Helvetica or Arial or whatever this is. Uh, because I only loaded the font on the shelf. Now I have to say, I declared 
and I'm gonna, I sorry, I declared, I assigned, and now I have to use it. So always the same thing, declaring, assigning, and using. So this would be using. Declaring, assigning, and using. So I'm declaring, I'm assigning, and now I'll, I'm gonna use. So I'm just gonna say, mm, let's see how this is done. Load font, text font. Okay, perfect. We're just, we're just gonna say from here on, all the text that's gonna be displayed after this line is gonna be with my font. So text font says like color, like stroke, just says that whenever you draw texts, the text font will be my font. And whoops, my font, my font. And guess what? Ta-da! The font now gets used as a variable, okay? So I, I use this example to show you how a different kind of variable is created. This is called a, an object variable. Um, so it's kind of more complex. Uh, but it's the same thing. So we, we, we instead of loading a number, instead of loading a, a color or a, or a string, we have loaded a full file into an object, into a variable. And now we're saying, just write text with this typeface. Okay, always the same thing. So to continue with our examples, uh, let my swatch. I've, you might have guessed that my swatch will be a color. We did this before. My swatch equals color red. That's 200. I like better 200. Rodrigo uh, Safran is saying a variable to a variable. Yeah. Now I was just uh, yeah. publishing the cons, sí. let, and why. Sí. <laughs> for, for Important. Important, although you can actually change things inside the arrays in const. You can yes. find it. Yeah. JavaScript really... is so flexible, yes. Yeah, it's so annoying. That, but yeah. That's why people love and hate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to define my swatch. So my swatch color, so it's a red. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm drawing. Let's see. the fill. I'm going to say fill my swatch. And now it's going to say, notice that everything, including the text, will be read. Why? There will be just one second, one split second, one frame where the text will be black because I haven't defined the fill here. Oh, no, sorry. Actually, no. Yeah. So the fill is defined here. And from here on, everything has been, the, the computer has, Follow me, it's like this. The computer starts and you say fill. So the computer goes to the to the drawer and picks up a red pen and you say, draw me a ball and he draws a ball and then draw me a text. And it, with the same pen, the computer draws a text. So if you do not change the color of the pen, everything gets drawn in red, okay? So if you wanna change the fill, let's say my swatch, my, my other swatch. And let's say uh, dark green. I know it's throwing an error, but I'm just going to say here. So I'm just going to say this is a different uh, and more and uh, shorter way to say several variables. So if you have variables of the same type, I would encourage you to say like this, my swatch, comma, other swatch. So everything here will be colors. So. I'm defining my first swatch. I'm defining my other swatch. I'm assigning another color to the swatch. And I'm just going to say fill other swatch. And then whatever you do, it's like red and green. Okay, perfect. So colors get assigned like this. Of course, colors are really fun because you can actually say, yeah, let's, let's do, let's do, a, let's do a fun thing. Let's, Let's just for the sake of, of playing with this, let's let's do a, a counter. Like you're probably thinking a counter is used to count. So counter is getting 
equals zero. And let's just say counter plus plus. So if you pay the attention when we're talking about loops, saying counter plus plus, saying something plus plus is the same as saying this is equal, oops, this is equal to itself plus one. Um, so counter is getting zero, one, two, three, four, five. And let's use this counter here just to see what it does. So when you play with this, it, it gets out of control very fast. Um, you can actually say this because the, 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 the color is being specified as a number and it just gets out of control. So you could actually go into this and say, uh, we can actually change this uh, and change the color mode into a, a more sim uh, uh, nice, um, a nice, um, a nice system, and just increase or decrease the, the 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 values of it. Okay, so right now, yeah, let's just continue on with the with the with the example. But we can actually use numeric values to 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 change the colors if we want to, or we can change individual individual uh, RGB values of it. Um, Okay, so continuing, uh, colors. And finally, Booleans. And I wanna talk Booleans because I'm gonna use this, um, somehow it stopped, okay. I'm using this, I'm gonna use this uh, vertical and horizontal position to change the, the, um, to change the canvas color. Uh, so declaring variables, let, um, I'm gonna check if it's to the left and if it's to the right. So if it's to the left, it's gonna be, oh, I'm just gonna say, Teresa? Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, this is pretty obvious, this is a color, this is a number. Um, and position, it's gonna be, let's say false. Let's start this with false. So this is a Boolean. Boolean is a special kind of variable that's it's called it's a it's a bit operator uh, it, it's it's just it's just true or false zero or one so it just has two positions uh, boolean's misspelled boolean um it's close true or false and this is really cool because you can actually say um this is going to be redundant sorry uh you can actually say Um, position equals false. Espera lá que agora atrapalhei-me. Como é que eu vou explicar isto? Porque eu tenho que explicar o it. Uh, yeah, I cannot explain. I'll have to explain this one with the final concepts. Uh, we're on time. We're four minutes early, but we're on time. I'll have to explain this with the final concept. It's called a NIF. So what we're going to do is ask the computer if something is true and we'll use the, the variable if position is true then the background will be light gray else if the position is uh, true uh, sorry if it's true it's light gray if it's false it will be for example black so right now let me say this is already false if i print it if you want to to see what it does i'll just go like this it will print either zero or one, or it will print true or false. Of course, you cannot divide it by two, of course. So when you print the position, it, it prints false. Uh, so we can actually say, um, let me just say something. Let me just check one thing out, or since I have no clue what's going on, what it's going to do. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, just checking something. Okay. Uh, if, if you're printing, uh, if you print this, the computer says it's false. It's not zero nor one, it's false. Sometimes uh, you these values also work with zero and one. Sometimes it's useful, but just beware that you're getting a, a true Boolean and not a number. Uh, 
So, perdi o fio à meada, só um segundo. Ok. So, I, I'm declaring this variable either true or false. So, right now I'm going to say exactly if it's true, it's light. If it's false, it's black. So, we're going to join the two concepts in the same operation and we're going to do a conditional operator. Conditional. Oh, a conditional. It, yeah. Operation. Operator, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm just take, taking this out. I'm not sure what I'm doing. A condition. Um, if the if block is the same as a loop, if something in here is true, then do the instruction. So if whatever is inside of here is true, for example, the variable position, then the background is 225. So what happened here? is that the position is false so the computer never the computer is never updating i'm oh, sorry the computer is never updating the background because this is always false so it's always false so this one in here is not true so this if the parameter is false this does not execute, right? Uh, okay. Okay. So if we change this to true, then it works. If the program was written like this with an if, a simple if, it wouldn't allow us for great flexibility. So the if statement checks if it, this is true and does something, and then can actually continue the if and say else, if it's false, then the background is 20. So the parameter is already, uh, the parameter is already uh, true or false. So it's true already, so it works. Uh, so if we change this into false, now it executes the second operation. See? So this is the way to check for um, a Boolean. So right now, uh, let me just do something that I, want to, I wanted to do with this, because if this is true, it works else it must be wrong so the only problem is um, when you're doing for example um, uh, verifications of age of or of for example money if the person doesn't have it's below 18 it cannot enter the website and it's it if he, the person is above 18 he can enter the, the website but there's there's only one problem sometimes checking for below and for upwards you forget to check for exactly 18 for the number so this this structure doesn't give us the the flexibility that we need so if let's let's use the is let's use the counter the counter value let's take out this one let's use the counter value so the count, let's use the example i was telling you about let's imagine that this was a age sensitive website and the and the, the counter will be 18 if uh, the age or let's yeah, if the counter is below 18, then it will be black, uh, white, else. And now I can use a different else. Else, if counter is above 18, then the background is white. The only problem is, the counter is exactly 18, so it's it's still not executing the the dark or the light one. So we have to say, okay, for 20, it kind of works with the light one. Sorry, the dark one. For 16, it kind of works with the light one. And uh, when it's 18, we have a problem. So we can either do below, above, and everything else. Uh, 
לסובלות. איך שווה? Everything else will be dark blue. So when it's exactly 18, if I spell backwards, when it's exactly 18, it does it like this. Okay. And right now, the, 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 this program is very stupid because it's static. And we're going to convert this program very fast uh, into a dynamic program just by saying if the count, if the, mouse x under width times two, guess what? If the mouse is to the left of the screen, else if the mouse x is to the right of the screen, so this word I'm using width times two, width is the width of the canvas. So the width is automatically defined when you say set up canvas, create canvas, sorry, Get up canvas. So the width is this number. The computer already loads this variable with this number. So if the mouse is to the left of the middle of the screen, if the mouse is to the right of the middle of the screen, for everything else, the background is blue. So right now we have a dynamic program that goes to the left, to the right, and in between. So you have to check for these conditions always. Make sure that you do what's called a catch-all. So if something less, if something above, everything else, make sure you catch it. Okay? And this defines a NIF statement. Okay? Uh, yeah. And... It was again, once again, it was too fast, but we've covered variables. And this, this, this was my best attempt at covering variables and if statements in one hour uh, program. I hope this has been intelligible. What I, I'm going to suggest, Bruno and Rodrigo, is make a short pause and we'll uh, um, dive into starting to build because right now we finished the foundation. So we covered everything except for a raise. We'll need the raise, but we'll use it in the next hour. Uh, we covered the foundationals of doing whatever you need to do a, a graphical program. So drawing, functions, um, conditions, and loops. And this will be the, the necessary tool, uh, building blocks to do, to do what we need to do. Just one final concept called the raise. Sim, fazemos o um intervalinho. Sim, 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 sim. Então, eu preciso só fazer aqui uma pausa de manutenção, também vou, vou pôr aqui mute, uh, mas uh, eu, posso, eu venho já e posso tirar dúvidas se tiverem. I can take on questions if you leave me here. I'll just have to a couple of minutes leave okay, here. But, uh, a break uh, by 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. Sim, eu não sei, de, se vocês acharem sensível também para... Eu confesso sim, que estive o dia toda frente do computador, estou aqui um bocado, preciso mexer. Sim, sim, ok, ok, ok. So uh, we will come back to so uh, 50 past six. That is okay for all of you. Yes. Okay. See you then. Okay. okay. Just a couple of minutes. Okay. Good job.
<coughs> okay. Bruno, are we all set up? Okay, yes. so see? Yes, see, see, see. Okay, so I was already preparing, so I, I left um, I left the sketch here. I, I forgot I did a small glitch on my on my on my part, but I can show you a trick to do this. Um, I forgot to to download this uh, previously. So this allows me to show you. I prepared a, a, a sample here just to play with it. Whenever you want to, if, for example, if you want to back up or give it to someone else or to work on, on these files locally, you can act, always download your sketch and save it to your computer. It's a thing I encourage you to do because sometimes accidents happen and things get erased. So I'll, I'll just download the copy and I can actually show it to you that this file downloaded, uh, I don't know where it is, actually runs from your computer. So if you extract your file and run it, uh, it's taking a long time to run. Why is it not running? Okay, it's not running. It should be, it should be running. Why is it not, not running? Okay. It should be running. I have no clue why it's not running. Uh, it's over here. Uh, ah, okay. There's a, there's a uh, there's a, a problem with JSON. Uh, let me run this in uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, this is a security issue when you're using a JSON when you're using a JSON file. Okay. Um, it wants to run from a local computer, from a local server. It has been running in the local server. So small trick, same thing, loading the file, and now it runs. So just saying that if you want to back up your files, and you should always, you can actually um, back up your files. Just to show you that I'm running this file from my local computer, from the files I've downloaded. I'm doing this because I actually want this file and I want this file. Uh, let me just ask for Portugal also. Okay, and Portugal. I'm, 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 I'm gonna ask for this file. I'm, I'm showing you this because I've previously prepared. So I'm going I'm gonna run through this uh, thing. So this file, this file, and this file. Uh, and these files are... Um, were taken from that address. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a technique that you can actually use an API to load some data. Um, but for the sake of clarity and to avoid using uh, uh, online APIs, I've, I've, we just downloaded the data before and prepared it as it was a uh, true data set. So in a few seconds, I'm going to create a folder data and I'm placing uploads. And uploading these files over here. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah. So right now, you can, if you want to follow along, just uh, share, just copy my the sketch you're seeing. Just copy to yourself and edit. So you have what it's called the bare bones. I'll just uh, I'm duplicating it just for backups, and I'm going backwards. To, to hmm, it didn't, it didn't say why not duplicate. Yes, save. Now I'm going backwards. Yeah, come on. Okay, I'll talk about it because I can say it's not possible. You can suffer the more copy of the bare bone. Okay, bare boilerplate. Save. Okay. I can share it with you. This is the boilerplate if you want to have it. If anything goes wrong, you can, you can go back in time. This is the boilerplate we'll be using, but I'll be working. Oh, 
I'll be working on this one, okay. So I'll be working on this one. Just to make sure everyone is on the same page. The boilerplate is that one. And I'll be working on this one, working file. Okay. So the data set is from here, if you wanna explore it. Um, we just took out the CSV and clean it a bit. And I'm gonna show you something. So we're gonna be using something that might be scary when you're when you're working with a, an online API like the weather, like uh, the, I usually use the um, the Chuck Norris jokes or the dead jokes API where it gives you a random joke. It's really fun to use or the internet cats. So when you're using a, an API, um, usually it gives you a, a strange code like this. Don't be scared. This is just something we'll see in the final in the final variable object. This is a, what's called an array of objects. So this is a probably the most complex thing you'll deal you have to deal. So we'll just start with the concept of an array. So first of all, declaring variables. I'm going to declare a variable called data. Let uh, uh, let um, my data. Let's call my data because data could be pro problematic. And for the sake of this explanation, I'm just going to talk about uh, a new kind of variable. So we've talked about numbers. So we talk about colors. So we're going to talk about arrays. So like I've mentioned, a variable is a box that stores numbers. Like a memory is a shelf, and the, 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 the variable is a box that puts stuff inside. But like when you're moving your house, sometimes you put boxes inside of boxes. So an array is a special kind of variable that holds other variables. So it, it allows you to collect uh, not entirely true, but it allows you to collect several numbers, several colors, several strings. So you can actually have, for example, if I, if I say data equals, let's the usual the, the usual example that you see in the books is that we want to say the age and like for example my age like forty three. Okay, and I would do I would do print data. Uh, sorry, my data. Sorry. My data, yes. Uh, and the computer would say uh, it's running and say 43. So, for example, but if I wanted to say, okay, my data is equals 43, and I want to say my kid's data is uh, uh, 24, and my, I don't know, my kid's data is, is, 10, is 10, it's not 24, but okay. Um, then I would have to create several variables, and sometimes it's not useful. Because like, you, like you've seen, when we want to ask for the weather, when, to, when we want to ask for a joke, then we have a collection of jokes. And we want to choose, I want a joke number one, a joke number two, joke number three. And sometimes you only, want, you only have one variable. You have only, one, only have one box, but inside that box, you want to choose. And this is the kind of thing that uh, an array does. So, like I usually like to be very graphical. Like I, I told you, it's a box, but this is a box of boxes. So this is a special kind of box that has stuff in it. So I could say this box, notice that I'm using the square brackets now. This is a box that holds, for example, our family's ages, okay? So, Instead of having one box that holds one value, I have a box that holds, let's call it a collection of values. This is not true. People using JavaScript already are cringing right now, but this is, it's like a bunch of numbers inside the same place. What happens is the computer knows that this is a collection, that this is a special kind of box that has several things in it. When, when we want the first one, we ask, Give me the box, the first thing in the box. Give me the second thing in the box. Give me the third thing in the box, okay? So this is very practical, as you've seen, because sometimes we don't know how many items are in the box. That's the whole purpose of doing data visualization. Like I showed you in the first example of Nicholas Felton, he started riding his bike in New York City, and it is one day, and then he did two days, and he did three days, 300 days. 365. So when you do the visualization, you don't know when it ends, but you actually want everything inside of it. So you ask for the box and then you go through everything inside the box. And that's the cool trick of it. 
So this is a special kind of a, a variable. And I'm sorry to be doing this in less than two hours, going from numbers to arrays. You usually don't do this, but I hope you are managing to, to understand it. So we have numbers, we have colors, we have names, we have strings, and we can have collections, boxes that hold a, a, a very big number of them. Okay. So the trick is, okay, but now, I want one at a time. Yes, remember, uh, notice here, I print my data, right? I printed my data. Oops, sorry, 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 sorry. Data. I printed the my data array uh, and it gives me my data equals. And notice here, the computer already knows that this is a special kind of box that has four numbers in it, okay? The computer automatically counts it. So, uh, Counts. We heard this number before. I've used the counter today. On Monday, we used a loop iterator counting through the numbers. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So if you open the box, the computer says, okay, item number zero, 43. Item number one, 10. And it's, this checks out, okay? So the numbers are all in here. Item number two. So remember I told you, you should always start counting with the, with the zero. So zero, one, two, three. So remember, I have four things in a box, starting in zero, 43, one, 10, two, five, three, 45. So four items, zero, one, two, three, okay? So this is cool because this is an array. Usually uh, when I started learning, I started learning in director, we call these lists. And in Portuguese, it's easier to call this. In Portuguese, the number for the the name for array is vector, and usually vector in English is another thing, so it gets confusing. So if it gets if it gets confusing, it's easier to think about this as a list, if it's useful for you. At least for me, it is. So this is kind of a list of things, a list of numbers. You go through the one, two, three, four, five. Like you know, like when you're writing in Microsoft Word and you have a bullet list. Bullet number zero, bullet number one, bullet number two. So this is called the index position of the variable in the array. Okay. So Professor, sorry, I got a little bit confused now. Can I ask you something? Sorry yeah, to interrupt. Yeah. It seems uh, like isn't isn't lists another kind of variable? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and just for the sake of simplicity to 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 make it more for beginners, uh because yeah, so, yeah, okay, okay, you caught. I shouldn't <laughs> say this. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But just for the sake of simplicity, I'm, I'm trying to do the parallel thing when when you when you're writing in emails and you do a bullet list, you know, like point number one. So this is the idea of the first one in the position, right? Okay, okay. I just asked because I, I I really got confused for a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're absolutely right. I'll I'll stop using the term list. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, so the, the, I have a problem because, when, because we're Portuguese and in Portuguese, technically this is called a vector and they cannot say vector in English because vector in, is, will be another thing. So the same thing that happens with lists, I cannot. So yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. Objects, objects inside the box is a, a good. Uh, you, 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 you don't use objects também porque vamos usar objects assim. Yes. Object, yes. <laughs> it's, okay, it's an array, people. It's an array. You have to word, use the word array. Okay. <laughs> I I have no clue how to translate the word array in Portuguese. Array is like a range, but range is another thing, especially in Python. Uh, in Brazil, we use array as as array. <laughs> I array is right. Port Portugal don't mean, um, is different. Okay. Yeah, port uh, in Portugal, the, the well, the people. Uh, I have several computing books, uh, programming books, and they always call the vector. So technically, it's like a vector of numbers, a vector of words. Yeah. Well, I'm no programmer. Okay, Jose, but thank you for the correction, and let's keep this light, the the approach light, and maybe you can email us a list of technical inconsistencies for us to address in the future. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, let's call it just an array. Uh, usually I call it a box of numbers, a box of boxes. It's easier. Um, just use the metaphor you feel more comfortable with. The idea here is this special variable, it's a complex variable, 
this special variable has more than one value separated and it can do special things like go through all the items separately, like reorder stuff, etc. Um, right now, I just wanted to notice that I'm using all the values here in uh, separated. So each one is individual, but they're all saved in the same place. And you might have guessed that I could just go through here and just load, for example, all the datas. I'm just using a, a special array here from the data set. Uh, I can just place it here, you know? I placed all the data here. And now, right now, it has 31 dates. They're all by order. It's not very interesting. But the computer says, uh, the computer tells me all of them. So I can ask for the computer, OK, give me the data. But usually, you want a particular date. So I can ask for the first one. Usually, this is the time when, when this is interactive. Ask students in the room if anyone wants to try and guess, how do I access the first or the last one? Uh, Tiago is mentioning we can use the term sequence for array. OK, sequence, sequence. Thank you, Tiago. I'll have to think about this one. Sequence is good because we have an index number, and they're, they're all sequenced. OK, perfect. Sequenced. Sequence for the number. So we have the zero, the one, the two, the three, the four. So how do, would I print out my first item in the array? Anyone? I just want the first one. So I would ask for the array, and then I would ask for the specific index number. So the specific position in the list. So remember that this box holds many numbers and I can ask for the first, the second, the third. So the, the way to access a specific index position in the array would be by giving it the, uh, uh, the array access. Uh, hmm. What's it complaining about? Take a physics key. Ah, okay. Uh, I would ask for the specific index position so go into the box go into the box and give me the first guy so the first guy remember is zero so the zero is the first one is 1985 perfect and now i would ask for the third for the fourth for the fifth sometimes we don't know where it ends sometimes we just need the last one so yeah how do we ask for the last item if we if we don't know how many there are. Actually, I told you that this box is very special. The computer, when it loads the box, it's like, I don't know, uh, uh, Tiago was mentioning using sequence. When the, the, the referees in, the, in, a, in a Formula One race do the, the, the setup position for the cars, they know how many cars are in the setup. So they know which one is the first, they know which one is the last. So the computer already knows this when it loads the array. So I can ask actually ask for the my data dot length. And this will throw an error. And I'll explain. Okay. And it's called undefined. So wow, how do you what the hell? So what this word gives us, so the box I told you, the box is a special kind of box that has properties. And this word length is counting the 31 numbers that inside are inside the box. But you have to remember that computers like to count with the index zero. So having 31 numbers or cars in the race means if you start counting with zero, let's open up the box and say the number zero, 1985, and we go all the way to the end. Remember it said 31, guess what? If you start counting with zero, the last one will be the total cars minus one, okay? This is a special trick you have to remember always. So the box has, allows you to store several stuff, but the number of items in the box does not match the index position. The index position is always shifted by minus one. Very annoying, I know, but once you get used to it, you forget about it. So you give the last one, you just ask for the total number of cars, but the index position is minus one. So if you ask for the minus one, 
it will give you two hundred. Yeah, perfect. Two hundred two thousand sixteen. And let me see. It checks out. Perfect. Okay. So this box is a special kind of box that holds numbers. In this case, it could hold our full names. It could hold uh, jokes. Uh, and I will show you a final box. I know, I know it's already 6.30. And nós temos até a shit. Ok, we'll have to... Não, podemos, julgo, o Rodrigo está aí, mas podemos ir um bocadinho mais para lá. Às sete e meia, não é? Ok, ok. Sete e meia, sete e meia, ok. Ok, então... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tem uma hora We should have started seven <laughs> minutes ago. I'll go fast, because I think this is probably able, we're able to do this in an hour. So let me show you another thing. Usually, like I'm, we're going to be using, the data is very weird. It comes in this very weird format. This is called a, a JSON object, okay? Don't, be, don't worry. Uh, this is kind of strange. But notice that inside this JSON object, we have an array of objects. So what's happening here? Let's, let's explain it by parts. One final thing. This is the basic JSON object. JSON object is something that's put inside a, a block of code, a, a, a curly a curly brackets, and it has what's called um ah, I forgot the description and value is the bom, deu-me uma branca. Uh, forgot. Um, this is a pair of é o tag ah block. <laughs> okay, this shouldn't happen. <laughs> JSON objects. What's this called? It's like the descriptor. It's like the, the 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 property and the value. Okay, so sorry. Okay, yeah. Okay, this is the property. Sorry, <laughs> and this is the value. So what what's happening here? At this special object has a property. It's called European Union. It's called France. The, and the value. It's the codes. It could be a number. It could be a color. It could be a boolean. In this case, it's just the property is a string. Always a string. And this is a value that could be text, numbers, etc. So let's just copy this one into here and say, let's see the difference. Uh, my temp objects, just for us to see. I'm just going to paste it here. Uh, tidy code. I forgot how to do tidy codes. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to paste it here and I'm going to print my, my, my temp objects. Okay. So when you print a temp object, notice that there's a slight difference so it's not an array it looks like an array it's not an array but it kind of behaves like an array okay so when we're using data sets from the web to do visualizations usually on the web this is the most common format that you're going to be encountering okay that's why i've, I've insisted on using the the json objects today uh, although this is very complex and to do it in four hours is very fast but Bear with me for a second. I guess this will be easy if you get the, the hang of it. Uh, so it not, for the first thing you notice, it, it's not a countable object because it doesn't count things inside of it because it's just an object. It has properties. So property number one, it has a string. Property number two has a string. So it kind of behaves like a, 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 an array. What we're going to use is we're going to use this kind of notation and then something, an array will appear here. So usually this is what happens. As a string, you can ask for a specific, um, you can ask for a specific property on a string. Um, uh, uh, it will throw, okay, this will throw an error. Uh, you can ask for a specific, uh, you can ask for a specific uh, um, property property uh, by name. If you do it like this, uh, I have an error over there. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done this. So you ask for 
on the data set, you ask for the data, remember? And you ask for the data zero for the first. So when I want to ask for the specific value on an object, I will ask for the name of that property. You, you wrote, uh, no consigo escrever. Okay. So when you ask for the first position in an array, you ask, it gives you the simple value that is stored in that position. In an object, you have to ask for the specific property. So the property, and this will be familiar to many people who program. And uh, when, when you start using the p5.js or processing for more than, I don't know, three days, you'll encounter a lot of stuff that has this kind of notation, variable dot something. So this dot something is a property, is a value that's inside of an object. So just to say this is similar, what we're going to have. And for this visualization that we should have started 13 minutes ago, we're going to use this notation. We're, we're going to ask for something inside a data stream that has an array of values, OK? This is just to finish all the explanation of all the variables that we're going to use. And finally, so always late. Uh, finally, we're going to start using our visualization. So any visualizations always starts, like you probably have learned, any visualization starts with analysis of the data and the questions you want to ask. So the analysis of the data right now, as always, I was very ambitious. I wanted to put a value um, and a tag. Let's just use, for the sake of simplicity on this visualization, we're just going to ask for the data stream, for example, for the European countries. Uh, and we'll ask for not the code, but for the data. So you're, we're going to ask for Europe.data, and it will uh, um, return us dates, values, and tags. And we're going to use the property date from each object. So as, you, as you're probably guessing, we're going to ask for the file. And then in that file, we're going to ask for a specific property, Europe and date. And this will return us, guess what? This is an array, OK? We're, I'm trying to, I know this is very ambitious for first time beginners. Just go with us because you'll see this a lot. And you have, it's, it's just a question of losing the fear, OK? Don't be afraid of this stuff. When you see a, a square bracket, you know it's an array. When you see a curly bracket, probably it's an object. And you'll have to go between them and analyze them. It's really, really simple once you get the hang of it. I know for first time beginners, this will be very complex, very weird. Bear with me, just go, go, for, go, go with us just for a second and you'll see. So first of all, I'll go into my sketch. Sorry, into my sketch. Uh, I'll duplicate this for later to... to comments. I know I, I'm always lying. I'm always saying this will be the thing and it's not always the thing. It's copy number two. Uh, arrays and objects. Okay. And I'll just go back to the to the collection. And I'll just go back to the collection. Um, yeah. I'll just clean it up. So We'll load the data, and right now I'm gonna pre. I'm gonna do the the what's called pseudo code. Pseudo code. We're gonna do the instructions in natural language in my head for it to be simple. So we're gonna declare the variables. Data. We're gonna load the data. We're gonna assign the the the, the values to the variables, and you'll see because we'll have to break this the data into a specific thing. And on the draw, we're going to clear the screen because it's doing live. It's being live. We're going to update anything we're going to do, update the drawing, update the values, and draw the updated values. OK, it's always like this. And th th this drawing will be custom, custom shape. Uh, custom shapes. Not sure if we're going to have time for this, but OK. So this is this is a structure 
always that we're going to do. So the JSON should have should be coming from here, but for the sake of it, we're going to use a, a file that's here. So first of all, loading a file. So loading a file should be, for example, in and out. Maybe it's in and out. Input load JSON. Perfect. In and out. Getting a JSON file. So just click on JSON files, preload, get the most relevant earthquakes back up, but the database you see here. So is a JSON file or a, a string API. So what it tells us is get an URL. So we're getting an URL. So let URL. This is the URL of our file. And the URL is always like an HTTPS request or a local request. So URL equals string data because the URLs are always strings data and uh, yeah that'll set of JSON okay copy I always do copy paste because I do a lot of errors while typing I encourage you to do this so the URL is here and now I will just load JSON into a variable okay so my data will be loaded let my data our full data will be loaded into this variable. Oops, sorry. Okay. Right now, we can actually print, uh, not right now, um, sometimes because this is a JSON operation, sometimes this is not available. Um, on request. So this is uh, JavaScript returns a promise. So if you want to use the full data, when this is returned, it will be available on setup. So let's check for, <laughs> let's check for data. Full data, let's print full data. Uh, single comma, sorry. Sometimes I misuse this stuff. So if we write it now, aha, it loaded and it has an object. See here, you give me an object and each object is another object. So I open Europe and this object Europe has a code and then has a data. Guess what? It has an array. So I go to a data and I see one, two, okay, lots of objects. So what I want to do is, let me think. I want to get a partial data or get Europe data. For example, if I'm just seeing Europe, let's just call it Europe data, okay? And this Europe data, guess what? Europe, so it's the full data, dot Europe, dot data. Maybe Europe data, perfect. The semantic name of the value is cool. So I just get, okay. Europe data equals to the full data dot Europe dot data. And now let's print Europe data and see what it's giving me. Always check with the print with the with the um, with the print line. To see if you're getting what you're expected to get. And now I have Europe data set, perfect, 42. It's an array of 42 objects. So I already have an array of things. So I have a box of variables. Very well. So now I'm on it. I want you to remember what we did last week. When we have several things and we go, want to go through them one by one, guess what? We do a loop. Right? So yeah, I don't know how many items there are in the Europe data set. We don't know, but the computer does. See here, it has 42 guys. Remember, the computer, when it loads an array, it loads them everyone and then it counts like an inventory. So it already knows how many items are in, in array because it's the length of the array. It's the size of the array. So yeah, let me let me think about this for a second. Okay, so I want to, for example, I want to put a ball on a screen for each item in the array. So let's 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 just did what we did last time. 
So let's just draw the, the, the value. So a cycle four, open and close. Always do this, open and close, and then go inside. I always try to do this like this to, for, to not produce errors. Let I, so the, uh, an iterator, start with zero. I smaller than, let's see, Europe data dot length, right? Will this work? Okay. No one's guessing. Remember, if we use the length, the size of the array, the last one will not be there. So it starts in zero. So the length minus one, always. Europe dot length minus one because the zero counts. So you shift everyone one down. And I plus plus. So you run through the items one by one. So this already works. And we, we're going to draw an ellipse. Like we <laughs> uh, No stroke. Só para ser um bocadinho mais bonito. Uh, ainda assim não tem não é nada bonito. Ok, we're going to draw an ellipse. And we're going to draw an ellipse. Yeah, I don't really know what's, what's, it, what, what's going to do. So we're going to draw an ellipse. Uh, let me see. This is an object. And it has a date. And it has a value. I can actually use this value. This was a random uh, random value generated. Um, I can use this value for, for, let's use this value. I'm just going to draw an ellipse on the middle of a screen with times two. And let me, okay, this is my position. So the Y will be, I will just put it here like this. So we'll have 42 ellipses being drawn here each time. So I want this number, I want this number to be each object because I'm going throughout each object. So object number zero. So Europe data zero dot value. I want to get the, to into the value. So let's just do it like this. Let position Y equals I want to go into the Europe data. And remember, this is an array. So now I'm going to go into the array access index. And I want to go one by one. So Europe data i, because I'm using the iterator i to go through each one. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 42 times. So I'm just going to put it here. Sorry, oops, sorry. I want to go into each one of them. And I want to go into each one of them and get, so the zero, I want to go into zero and get value. So dot value. If I do position Y equals each object dot value. So now I have a number here that I can plug into my calculation. So if I do this, this should be varying. Okay, not very much by this. Okay, I wanted to do a visualization that would go from the zero to the top. Once again, always check your data before doing these kind of decisions because I'm going to do a hard-coded decision for the sake of brevity. Always check the data. So when you're looking at the values, it's, var it's, it's doing a random variation between... Uh, okay, no sé qué está pasando. Okay. It's doing a random variation, a very small random variation between 75, 75 more or less, okay. So let's just assume that this varies between 70 and 100 to give it a margin. Not very good for that, uh, for <laughs> truthful data visualizations, but okay. Let's just assume the, the, the interval would be this. Uh, and it would be perfect if I could say, okay, our bottom, our floor is 70 and our top maximum level is this. And I could just go, this is the maximum, this is the top. Guess what? Processing has, this is done so many times that processing has a really cool function that I wish would exist in, in vanilla JavaScript. And it doesn't, it's called a map function, okay? So if we go into 
map function, eu não sei qual é o termo, uh, the map function is a, a three simple rule, um, it's actually, it has a map and it has a norm, it's, it's a kind of normalization, but the term normal, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, the term normalization, if you go to math here, so on the reference, if you go to the math topic, you have a series of operations that are very common, really cool, this one, the LERP, uh, the map, the main, max, etc. So these kind of functions allow you to save a lot of time to just save you the time to go to Stack Overflow. The map just says, give me a, a, a number and say which is the bottom and the top value and remap it. So it's a three simple rule into the new values. So what I'm going to do Remember, we, we, we have been, we have been um, declaring variables and we have been reassigning values. So I'm going to reassign this variable, position y equals itself, but in a new scale. So remap it, map this position y again between 70 and 100. And I want it to go from the top to the bottom. But guess what? Guess what? Processing has the zero on top and the maximum on bottom. What the cool thing of this mapping function is, is that if you say that the bottom is down and the top is up, then it just goes backwards. It's a really cool function. So you just say, okay, height and zero. <laughs> so you just invert it. it well, in one function, now we'll have the, the balls spread out from the yeah well, well hmm. i guess a hundred is too is too high uh yeah maybe a hundred maybe it's just 90. i should for the sake of clarity i would just should just should i should just use 75 and, and 90. i can actually ask for processing to give me the the highest number yeah, okay, I should have explored this data set better. But okay, so just say 85 and 90. And now it's spreading out all the way almost to the top. Uh, hmm. What did I do? Okay, 90, what the hell, 88. I don't, uh, something is wrong here. Call well, remember my Zaltko, thank you. 22, 22, ah, 82, okay, okay, same. Okay, always check your data, guys, when doing visualizations. You can actually automate this. The, the, the file I gave you is already automated. So if I do 83, it will probably come up at, at all the way. To, okay, perfect. Okay. So I have my bottom and my ceiling, and it's spreading the balls all the way uh, vertically. So right now, I just go through each data point, and I get the vertical position of the data points. And before doing this, the variation was very small. Okay. So very small variation. Usually you can have variations between zero and one. It's called normalized values. And you spread the variation across the whole scale. So now we have the concept of scale that if we have time, I'll be changing in the DOM. But I just wanted to show you how to spread the values between the, the least, the minimum, and the maximum in the visualization. So actually this is the visualization part of it. Okay, so this, this is getting the data. And this is putting the data into our visual map. Um, and now, yeah, and this is drawing it. <laughs> um, and now what we want to do is, um, I don't know. Uh, I want to draw as many balls here as we have, um, as we have ears. E uh, sorry, ears, sorry. As we have ears, yeah, ears. So let's go into our data set again and see the objects has the date. So I will start in 1973. Okay. Again, I'm going to do this hard-coded. Okay. 
but uh, the file I gave you is already checking for minimum and maximum. So we, we start in 1983, and the advantage of using this is that the Europe data has 1973 and finishes in 2016, and no previous country has before 1973. So Portugal has from 85, I think. Yeah, okay. So we, we know that this data set only covers from 83 to 2016, so we can actually use this, this um, information. So let's call let position X the same thing, Europe.data. And guess what? So we go into the object, and now it's throwing me an error. We go, sorry, we go into the object and we want the date value. So date. Guess what? We'll have to map this date value again to distribute our years in the size of the canvas. So again, we do a map. Really simple. Should have started with X, sorry. I'm starting with X. And we're going to say it starts in 1970. Uh, sorry, 1970. Uh, I have a fish brain. Um, five, I think. Ah, I'm so Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. And we, we end in 2016, but now we want it to go from left to right. And guess what? In a second, it will just place everyone in our position. Of course, we have this really crazy scattered data plot. Now, right now, it looks like a, a scattered plot and not a, a line graph. Um, uh, let's just do a trick here for to keep things interesting and dynamic. Um, I'm saving it if you want to download the code. Uh, let's let's change dynamically the the width of the of the of the canvas so this is not exactly uh, processing code we're going to use javascript code when we when we load the, the the size of the canvas so this is a trick so the the visualization is like it will be an element inside of a container in a web page so you can actually use a trick to when it loads it checks for the parent container so if it's a mobile device if it's a desktop screen and it just makes it bigger or smaller and you can actually say um inner width and uh, inner height will be strange so i just say inner width and when it loads remember because it's setup if i hit play again it loads and it adjusts to the container okay so if you resize the window you have to do a resize function and not really i don't really recommend it to do that with p5.js but okay you can do, you can do it so when it loads the page and when it displays information, it can adjust to the size. So it still looks like a scatter plot. I was hoping for it to get more linear, but it's cool to see it like this. So what we're missing here is a line. Okay, so just let's let's just draw a line. So the trick of drawing a line is a line is always drawn between two points, point zero to one, one to two, two to three. So the trick here is, let me guess, okay. I can go, I'm going through all the points. I could do two cycles, but it would, be, it would be stupid because I'm going through all the points. Let me think, let me think. If I go from point zero to one, so if I go from I zero, and when the I is zero, I want to go to one. So the I will be I plus one. The problem is if I go all the way to the end, uh, the program will blow up. Let me try to do this because JavaScript sometimes it's cool. We can let it blow up and it will still run. Um, so I'm not doing optimized code, everyone. So be aware of what I'm going to do right now. So I'm just going to do a line object. So a line object, let me, now I have to do something. Okay. No stroke, feel 40. And I'm doing the Europe's visualization line. Uh, I'm going to, change the color. Uh, so I'm going to use stroke. I'm going to use a dark gray, 40, 0, 0, a dark gray, sorry, uh, no fill. Because we're changing between types of drawing. You have to 
make sure if this is better than running two loops. Maybe this is adding too many instructions, but let's see. Uh, and we'll do a line. So line has point one to point two. So it has x, y, x, y. So let's just say this will be position. Okay, position x. It gets position x. Okay. So I have to get the position, my current position and my next position. So uh, we're going to do a check. Uh, let, let me just see if it works. Uh, I think it's going to blow, but let me see if it works. Uh, next posh, uh, next position, next position, and next position. And instead of being y, the number i, so zero, when it, this is zero, I want this to be one. So zero plus one. When this is one, I want this to be two. So one plus one. So I'm just going to add i plus one. It's just going to add my current position to my future position. Not sure if this is the best approach. Next, posh. Uh, next, what? Uh, so I get this guy. I do the same thing. Not sure what, what I'm doing right now. Copy, 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 copy. Slow. When this is in Zoom, it's very slow. So I'm getting, I'm just mapping the next position. And I'm saying, so I'm going from position X to position I, posi next position X, and next position Y. And this is going to blow up because the final value will blow up. I don't know if the whole code will explode. Yeah, ah, okay. Something went wrong. So we have to do now a check if, this is the part where it gets stupid because, yeah. If the i is smaller than the Europe data minus two, you have to always check for it not to blow up in your face. Otherwise, the last value will blow up. Let's do a tidy code. And I still did something wrong. Uh, uh, next position Y, next position X. Date value, okay. Position Y. She's Y, she's Y, okay, go fish mal. Something went wrong and I have no clue what I did. Uh, what? So it starts always in the, in the proper place. Did I, did I change this? Ah, I changed this, okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing, man? What's happening here? Let's put it correctly, okay. <sighs> Let's put it, I, miss, I messed up somewhere, but this is fun. Um, X, Y, okay, perfect, okay. X, Y, X, Y. Okay, so let's now just copy this and rebuild it. Sorry about this. Sometimes this happens. I'm really messed up, a messed up coder. So let's call this N posh to be smaller code base. Uh, and, and let's just copy this again. By the same order. Okay, just changing the name of the variables. Very simple. And come on, work. <laughs> What the hell is happening here? Why is it not doing the line now? 
Okay, I'm really curious why this is not working. Uh, I'm sorry, this, this is not funny. N plus Y. It's correct. This guy doesn't want to work. If I equals, let me take this one out. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Okay, this is still not working. Ah, it's uh, Clark, the plus one, plus one. Okay, now it's, okay. Okay, so this is what I wanted to happen. Uh, but I, I wanted to do the if statement uh, because JavaScript, like I told you, is a very permissive language. Ah, I found an error in our code. Okay, so this is not optimized. Uh, 74 and 74. So it all broke. Okay, it wasn't. Notice that I'm seeing points going very near the top and I don't want them to go very near the top. Okay, so this will allow me to do a full proper, full spectrum visualization of the data set. So right now, we can actually pick up all the values you, we want in the code and distribute them along a specific um, scale. What I urge you to, I, uh, I have to let you know that the thing I was doing with the if is that the final value, because this line, We'll try to go from the current position to the next position. And you have to remember that the last position will not have a, a thing to go to. So usually in computer programming, this will break your program, okay? So you'll have to do a check. I'll just put, put a comment here. Remember, remember to check. Um, your range, okay? Uh, so this means, uh, I'll just do it. If uh, I less than uh, your data minus two. So it has the final one to go to, okay? This will do exactly the same thing, but um, it will not blow up. Uh, yeah, it, it, JavaScript allows you to render the page. so. Uh, it will do the render correctly, I guess. Um, but uh, this will be more correct. Okay. So finally, so guys, Fernando estava dizendo 75. Por que estava dizendo 75, Fernando? Já já foi já foi a bocado, Pedro. Já foi bem há bastante tempo. Sorry, o pai está aqui em baixo. Eu estou tentar. Eu vou olhando para as vossas caras, mas não consigo ver o chat ao mesmo tempo. Okay. Uh, so uh, right now there's two inconvenient things. I will try to solve them in one go to show you the final thing I wanted to show. And Bruno remembered yesterday, I wanted to show the DOM, yeah. So without too much explanation, the, the DOM is the document object model. It's a, a very strange name, a very engineer like uh, programming name to just call it when, to, to just, uh, to uh, a strange name to call to what are the things that are inside our browser window. So just to just to give you a, a brief explanation, the computer is like here, the it's like electrical hardware, right? The machine. And then it has a driver. It has some software, like the, the washing machine you have in your home, that drives the electricity on the machines, okay? And this driver is being operated, guess what, by who? By the operating system. So the operator is like the driver, the, the, the guy, who is driving the machine. So operator driving machine. So electrical drivers, operating system. And then the operating system has applications, okay? And these applications uh, show you contents. So this is what happens when the browser, it's an application, shows you content. So the browser has things to show you inside of it, okay? so. The browser itself, there's a, a, there's two levels. There's a browser object. So everything you see in the browser, the menus, the, the URL bar, it's called the BOM, the browser objects. And what you see inside the white thing 
here, the white thing. So this is the object, the browser objects, the menus, and this is the browser object. But the white thing, the, the body of the page is called the documents. So this document has many things, including, guess what? I'm just gonna do a, a, a fast thing here. Uh, when you inspect the page, very slowly because my computer is very slow on Zoom. I don't know why. When you click on an object, I'm, right now we're seeing more or less what the computer is seeing. So when you click on the browser, I can just make it bigger. Uh, not this. Thank you, slow ass computer. I'm sorry, I cannot make this faster. I, I have no clue why my computer slows down on Zoom. Um, so when we click on the browser, it, it is showing you what are the objects what are the things that are inside the window and you have this thing called canvas okay this is one thing but guess what i'll i'm, I'm gonna make a quick detour to show you a cool thing the fun of using processing and and here i'm gonna tease my student rita Antunes because she has been using processing and not pc5.js for obvious reasons of course rita i'm not telling you. um but I'm, I'm going to tease Rita to, to make her push to learn p5.js because you can actually do a graphical stuff and then you can do controllers by using document objects. Rita, aqui os controladores vão parecer super fáceis. Um, so what I, what I want to do is have a slider here just to control the offsets or the margins, for example, the vertical margin, I don't know, something. I'm going to do for the horizontals, for example. I'm just going to control this because I don't like this data point touching the, the, the left. So I'm going to create a, a slider that I can actually slide and move my visualization. I can scale my visualization on a different scale. So I can move the visualization in space. So guess what? When you go into processing, so just to, for, for you to remain, so for, to make it clear, this object on the page, this visualization on the page is actually, very slow, is actually a canvas element, okay? This is created automatically by the, the JavaScript library, but the, Java, the page itself is actually an HTML. You see here the main, uh, this is too small. Let me try to make it bigger. Okay, now I got it. You see here the main tag. So this is the main tag here. And you can actually, we can make things here. We can make like an H1. So this is basic HTML. So this is out of the scope of this workshop. But I just, I just want to show you this. Hello. So if I press hello here, it will push me here and hello objects. Okay. So what's happening, it's, it's creating uh, somewhere over here, uh, I don't know where it is. Okay. Okay. Somewhere over here in the middle of the body, it's creating a hello object and a canvas object. What we're going to do is create an, a new HTML object that will control the visualization. Okay. And you could do this in JavaScript, in HTML, and do a lot of you don't need to because the fun of using p5.js you can you can actually do it inside of your sketch so the challenge is to do it in nine minutes so let's go to reference very slowly very painfully to go to reference and see okay we, we want to control something that i've been calling the dom so we just go okay there's a dom section the dom remember that the dom is what the browser what the browser window sees so everything and you can actually see, well, I have a P5 elements in the P5 file, okay? But we can create HTML elements. So the DOM is the, all the collection of HTML markup, HTML elements, objects that are on the page, be the processing visualization being one of them, okay? So I want to create, guess what? A slider, the create slider. So simple, it's like painfully simple. So it just listen to the, it just check, Check the just check the 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 examples. I, I I really don't want to know what it does. So I, I know it's creating a variable, it's doing something. I'll just I'll just copy it one by one. So I'll go to setup. Uh, so declaring variables. I just put it slider in here. 
and then I go to function setup. Okay, so slider creates slider. Okay, just let's just do this. And on setup, I'll go to the end and I'll create a slider. And I'll wait for it. And haha, I have a slider. Okay, so really simple, Rita. <laughs> Muito mais fácil com o P5, com, com o controlador do P5, né? Uh, and now, yeah, I'll go. This is, I actually know what this is. This is just to put a slider in the middle of the sketch. This is actually using absolute position. Let's just ignore this for this second. And when I, I want to use this to control something, well, I'm going to control the offset. Okay. So I'm going to control the offset. So uh, let me create a, an offset X. Uh, and guess what? My offset X will be zero. Um, and when I draw the things, I want th this thing to be drawn in the position plus or minus the offset because I want to move it. So I want to draw it. Let me see. I want to draw it here plus offset or better yet, position X equals plus equals offset X. Okay. So it's it's always easier, and it will be easier when I comment the code for you to see. It's always easier to break this in lines. Of course, we can argue that this makes more lines of code and it gets less efficient, probably. But it's always easier for us programmers, at least designers, to <laughs> see the code better. Um, so the position is always equal to the position plus the offset. So right now, I just want to connect this to the offset. So, yeah, well. Let me go back to the example. On draw, value equals slider value. Guess what? Copy. On draw, where is the draw? Remember I had the update values here? Let's put it here. Value, update the value. Of course, I'm not using value. It doesn't know what value is, but I'm using an offset X, copy. And right now, as per magic, uh, of course, I forgot something. Okay. Uh, the thing is already working. I just forgot to update this one. Copy. Equals plus. Set X. So right now, it just pushes everything on the left, on the right. Yeah, but it, wouldn't it be cool if I would use this for the scale of the things? For example, for the left scale. So this would be uh, on the middle would be zero, negative and positive. So just now you just have to use some kind of mathematical magic and you would go... Uh, I could go. I could use the offset, or I could use the this mapping function. Uh, actually, I did it. I did it in the in the in the left uh, in the, the the last thing. I I'm ah, sorry. Too super bad. No example. In the example, I did it with. Um, I changed the mapping value, so I would go. Um, I'll just. I'm just gonna offset it for for a, for a lot. Uh, so when I, when I create a slider, let me see what it does. Zero to two hundred and fifty-five, and the interval is uh, and the default is a hundred. So zero, perfect. Two hundred and fifty-five, um, and yeah. Uh, let me guess what it. Let me guess offset. I can just offset it from from zero to so from minus width to plus width. Okay, I can just say okay, uh, minus width to width. So conseguir, opa, and it just starts in zero. Okay, so now it goes all the way to the left. 
all the way to the right. And we can just offset it. This doesn't give me the right visualization tool because I would like to for it to scale. So let me just think of, uh, uh, for a second. I want to scale everything. So scaling is actually um, multiplying values. I still have three minutes, so I'm thinking what I can do with this. So I'm just going to scale it for the fun of it. So I'm just going to do an offset X and I'm just going to do let's scale X. Okay. And the scale X, remember, scaling is very dangerous because it's usually between zero and one uh, for the 100%, and beyond one is 200, 300. So I'm just going to go scale X equals one. And you shouldn't go to all the way to zero because it will be invisible. And let me see. What if all the positions would be scaled by scale X? Uh, sorry. Offset. So lock, hot scale, lock, hot scale. So I should go here. Position X uh, times scale X. Uh, um, will this work? I have no clue. Uh, and pause X. Let me see if this works. Um, and now I just add another slider. So this would be the offset slider. And now I would just add a scale slider. And I just I'm just gonna change the names. Offset slider. And the scale slider. So I just uh, offsetting it and the scale slider. I have a problem. I never do the same thing twice. So it's very annoying. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, Pedro, Alina, desculpa, na criação da, da variável, puseste uh, dois S. Dois no, no S. Ah, estou burro. Obrigado, obrigado, obrigado. Offset. Por que é que ele está assim? Offset slider. Assim? Copy, copy. É o próprio. Por isso é que eu nunca, nunca escrevo. Por isso é que eu nunca escrevo as coisas, faço sempre copy paste. Ok. Uh, I would just go 0.01. Be careful with these numbers because the higher precision will be. I'll just go for five times and see what it does. And I'll just do one. And so now I have the scale, the offset and the scale. Uh, and I just have to do evil. Uh, now I forgot. Um, offset slider and skill slider. So this should be like this. And let me see if it works. Woohoo! It's very slow. I don't know why, but. It's working. We're changing the scale. Ah, very slow. Why is it? Because it's moving between strange numbers. So let's just go 0 0.1 and 5. Let me see what it does. It's still moving in strange numbers. Let me, there should be something about these numbers over here. Uh, ah, OK. It, remember I told you this stuff? Maybe it's this one. So I'm just going to. Just using a hundred decimal points. No, it's still still strange. Ah. I can just do it like this. Okay, so it moves between one one and five hundred. Just gonna do it like this, and then I'm gonna divide it. I'm gonna divide it here. So uh, one and five hundred. So I'm gonna say uh, scale x times a hundred. A hundred. Let me see if it works. Okay, now it. <laughs> and this should be a hundred. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
And let me see if it, now it moves more fluid. Ah, okay, now it's more fluid, okay. I, they, it, this must happen because this guy, probably the slider element in the HTML probably uh, returns into integer numbers and I have no clue. I have to go into the, into the code to see this. So now we can actually change this and offset it. So the problem now is that the offset should be the offset times scale because when we scale this to 500 times, I offset it and I don't see... Ah, I see it. Oh, perfect. Oh, no. Wow. I can't believe I did the math. Okay. Never happened in my life, in my whole life. Okay. So it's actually working. <laughs> it's working better than the example I did before. Uh, and in half of time. Okay. Guys, so this is the time where I stop and ask Rodrigo and Bruno if this is okay. And probably uh, ask you where you have more problems. If you have more time, we can explain anything or I can leave it in a commented file. Uh, estou a mexer o zoom. Não sei. Podem, se quiserem ligar os mics. If you want to turn on your mics or something. Uh, was it clear for you? Rita, you have exper some experience. Uh, was it clear? Was it too fast, too slow? A little too fast. But, but I think I understood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was, it, was this easier than using Control P5? Uh, I no. don't think <laughs> <laughs> I I think in the the control P five it, it is pretty easy too, but maybe this is faster. But I I understood better the control P five. I guess it's basically the same. I think right? it was the HTML. I don't know. Yeah. This is the the problem with the, usually with the P five JS is that you have to have some previous knowledge of HTML objects, but at least the code itself allows you to do some stuff. So I just wanted to show you these kind of controllers because it's very easy, a easy way to customize, to get access into the data, visual access. Uh, you don't have to use it. You can use the mouse, you can use the computer, the, the keyboard. I haven't shown how to use the keyboard, but sorry, don't have time for everything. But yeah, Roberto Padilla is saying he needs to, to see the recording and then practice a lot. Okay, Roberto, I'll leave you the commented files. And if you have any question, uh, Tiago is saying, can't wait to try it. We got Tiago. Um, I think, I just think that this, this is very powerful because this, well, my Bruno, maybe, and Rodrigo, maybe you can, uh, can see. We're just doing a very simple dots and lines thing. But uh, if you've seen the, 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 the example that we did in the, the online communication, it, it's the, the, I can show it the, you know, on Instagram. It's just also using just, dots and lines and and it's moving so it just if you want to make this kind of stuff you can actually do a moving visualization if you i can do it like this I, instead of doing it i can do the if we do if we do it like this uh on draw on update sorry update 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 if we do this we take this one out and we we do a moving um we do a moving animation, uh, uh, or not? Uh, oh, again, to the wrong side. This one. Okay, so we just do it like this, and you can actually do an interactive, um, an auto animated uh, visualization. Just load the values and just move the offsets, and it's already moving. Um, so you just need to have some, like Roberto said, just need to have some practice with the, with the code and the concepts, and knowing what you want to do because. I hope I try to simplify you the way to go into data sets because usually there are objects and going through each value of the data sets by going into loops of values in arrays. So it was very, very fast. I have never done this so fast in my life. Uh, usually this takes about five to six classes, um, but I hope this has been simple enough for you to lose the fear and just, just take this code and break it and make it your own and change the values. I, I guess this is the, I love the air that started drawing lines control. <laughs> yeah, you can just make crazy stuff. Just, ah, I haven't shown, I haven't shown. I let me show, Bruno, let me show you a scene. Ah, you're not going to do it. Yeah, Tiago, now I'm going to do something. 
I, I, I hope I've showed you that this is the, the basic set of controlling. I, we just controlled horizontal, right? But if you now do use the same rule set, offset and scaling for the vertical, you can use the same thing. Um, I hope I showed you the way to lose the fear to go into this kind of stuff. So it's very simple concepts, but as Roberto told, you have to practice them a lot. Let me just show you something here. Um, if, if instead of using the this ordered value, I haven't shown the really cool stuff that you can do with the computer. It's called random. So you can actually ask for the line to be drawn between a point and another random point. So let's, instead of using this, let's just say, let target equals, we're using target equals I plus one, right? We're using this one. And we just say targets here, okay? This is the target. So the line is being drawn between the origin and the target. But let's, for example, <laughs> forget we're using targets. And let's say, let's 